a really friendly table. So. Always too thick. Joel Perry, eight. Well, not a bad draw, I suppose. Had the the white gone in, apart from the penalty points, Gilbert would have had a, a simple starter down in bulk. But he does have a, a cutback red here. Awkward queuing though, with his hand placed as it is on the wood. That's unlucky. Joel Perry, four. Can't legislate for that. Gilbert's well acquainted with just how well Five. Perry can play. They've met in several meaningful matches. Perry beat him 6-5-2, I should say, in the last 11. 16 of the 2013 Wuxi Classic. 6-3 in the last 32 of the International Championship, also in 2013. Five. And in the last 16 of the 2014 Players' Championship, Perry su was superb. He beat Gilbert 4-1, making breaks of 53, 61, 98, and 128. 70. Always been one of those players, Eight. Joe Perry, that when he gets into a groove, he looks absolutely top class. Twenty four. Thirty one. Perry, 31. Two chances for Perry, 43 points accumulated, but only 19 in front.
Perry does have the gap between brown and green. He can see the red that's closest to the pocket. And you would think if he pots it, law of averages should be on something. And it might well be the the crunch blow. Well, he is on the yellow, he is on the blue, but neither pot could be described as simple. Joe Perry, one. And when he potted that red and knocked the pink safe, it wasn't in Perry's interests to do so, but now he's glad he did. One. Nicely cued. Did nice. well there to screw across the face of the black and not make contact with it. So, assuming the black goes in, Gilbert will arrive in the colours four points adrift. That means he needs yellow to pink. Sixty. Didn't time that well, didn't get hold of the cue ball. Eight. And that's why he's on the green, but too thin. He can pot it, of course. It's holding for the brown that's the issue. Well, earlier in the frame, he had a, an in-off after potting a ball that was unlucky. When you do that, you can't say. That's unfortunate. And so the tide turns again. Ball in hand for Perry. Six points ahead. What should be rudimentary green, brown and blue. And the first frame should be his. Oh, I thought for a moment that the green was going towards the near jaw. And from Perry's body language, I think he was a little concerned as well. The nap helped, though. Seven. And now he's about to draw first blood. Twelve. Perry, 12. Gilbert needs I'm one ready. snooker and concedes. Now, you know, this game is all about potting balls, with one exception, the white. You want to avoid that ball going into the pocket at all costs. For Dave Gilbert, he had a reminder there. Two in offs, both of them proved expensive. The second one proved terminal. Perry clears up, wins the frame on the blue. Joe Perry leads Dave Gilbert by one frame to nil. Now, over on table one, Judd Trump is almost there. 
almost got his first victory on the board. As you can see, he leads Martin Gould by 53 points. Pertinently, only 51 are on the table. So Gould needs a snooker. Otherwise, Trump is going to make the desired start. Looks very flashy in that suit with the, the black stripes down the sleeves we've seen before. And he's played some pretty flashy snooker. Absolutely fantastic player to watch. It really is a, a pleasure to see him in full flow. And as I say, in terms of status, in terms of world ranking, in terms of the way he normally plays in the Championship League, you have to say he must be regarded as the favourite for Group 5. We'll tell you how that one pans out. Now, though, back to Perry Gilbert. Back to table number two. Oh, and the whites in the pocket again. An unwanted hat trick for Gilbert. Hoping that the in off here is not as costly as the two in the previous frame. On paper, this should be a, a tough match to call as Gilbert gets an unexpected reprieve. There's just a couple of places between them in the world rankings. Joe Perry is number 22. Gilbert, 24th. Well, again, rather like a shot he played oh. using a rest in the previous frame, just seemed to miss time that. And that's why the cue ball hasn't obeyed orders. moment Gilbert making Joe Perry's life quite easy one six Perry, of course, will always have a very special place in Championship League history as he looks to see how he can remove the black and therefore free up a red or two. Yes, he was the inaugural champion at Crondon Park Golf Club in Essex when this tournament began in 2008. Overcame a certain Mark Selby in the final by three frames to one. And his reward for that was getting into the, the Premier League where he acquitted himself really well. Nowadays, of course, apart from the title and the associated financial gain, the big reward for the winners of, of Championship League in 2018 is a place in this year's Champion of Champions, again right here at the Rico Arena in Coventry. One of the best snooker players of his era, now one of the best commentators, if not the best, in my opinion, Neil Folds. He often called 
the champion of champions, okay. the fourth major. And I can see where he's coming from. All of the players want to be in it. So far qualified, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thanks to his wins in the Shanghai Masters and UK Championship. Mark Williams also in the field as Northern Ireland Open champion. Neil Robertson, he's the Scottish Open champion, won it just before Christmas. Sean Murphy as the, the champion of champions 23. title holder. And the latest to join the fold, of course, Mark Allen, winner of the Masters on Sunday night. Can confirm, by the way, that Judd Trump, as we strongly suspected, has beaten Martin Gould by three frames to one. Gould unable to get the snooker he needed with Reds left in frame four. Thirty one. Didn't want that kiss, and he scuppered. That's eight. Well, a valiant attempt oh, came perfect. really close, but not quite close enough. Just got too much of the jaw. So Gil get, Gilbert gets back to the table, maybe a little quicker than he thought he might. One. Now that was well cued, and look at, at what's left for him. Not an awkward ball, either red or colour, in sight. Eight. Nine. Well, to use a, a Ted Lowism, that one wiped its feet. Sixty. And then some. Seventy. The extended rest is used, and so to the extension on the back of the queue. Shouldn't be an issue, though. No great positional requirement here. Thirty-nine. 
bit. Next on the agenda for the guys is the seven. China Open qualifiers in Barnsley at the end of the week. That's it. That's for the next tournament proper on the calendar. That's the, the German Masters in Berlin, as I've mentioned before. And just like our first match on this table this morning, both of these two have survived a couple of qualifying rounds to be there. So two or four days of competition here would really help sharpen the game. 44. Well, the balls now are like you'd place them with your hand if you're just practicing and trying to get the Q arm going. 47. Hard to see a snag from here. 48. Thirteen in front, Gilbert, so he needs he won. yellow, green and brown. Fifty-three. Fifty-six. Sixth. Sixty-five. Now this is the Dave Gilbert we often see. Fluid scorer. One. And, and now back on level terms in rather a stylish fashion. And so Joe Perry was 1 0 up. He was seemingly looking good in frame two, but he missed a, a tough red to middle. Dave Gilbert did the rest with a 78 clearance. Joe Perry won. Dave Gilbert won. Now, normally at this stage, we'd flick you over to our stream on the other table, but right now there's no action because the afternoon session doesn't begin over there until three o'clock local time. What I can tell you is that we've had two completed matches on table one this morning. Both resulted in 3-1 score lines. Martin Gould beat Ricky Walden 3-1. Walden, if you're just joining us, made 140 break, the highest of the group so far. But then Gould came unstuck, losing 3-1 to Judd Trump in the other match. As for the action here on table two, a little slower, but Ben Wollaston, aided by breaks of 99 and 101, launched by an outrageous fluke, pulled away from 1-1 to beat Mark Williams 3-1. And now we've got Perry and Gilbert on level terms. The third frame, Dave Gilbert.
with his hand on the middle pocket leather. That was a little distracting for Gilbert. Nevertheless, he would have expected to pop that. Well, not a bad kiss at all. The Blackwell pot. Eight. It's been a, a really good career for Joe Perry, who's now 43 years of age. This is 26th season as a professional. He's been involved in the quarterfinals or better in 35 world ranking events. 60. The high point, of course, was winning the Players' Championship in Thailand in 2015. Coming back from 3-0 down to beat Mark Williams in the final 4-3. Just too thin a contact. But skimming off the reds as opposed to hitting them a lusty blow. Well, a speculative red to the middle pocket, more out of hope than expectation, knowing full well he was going to hold on the black and not leave anything on. The afternoon session is supposed to start at 3 o'clock local time and doesn't look like a, a lengthy lunch break for Perry either way because he's back on this table right at the start of the afternoon against Ben Wollaston. And that match scheduled to start in around 45 minutes time but as you can see plenty of unfinished business in this one yet.
no pot, but no damage done. Now, Perry's undoing in the previous frame was taking on a, a tough red to the left-hand middle pocket. He could do so again here, but I think it would be imprudent. Well, there was a question mark there whether he'd be on anything at one point, but I think he deserves to be. Good pot from Perry. Yellow over the pocket. Might well make hay. Three. Really good break builder, Perry, at his best. Made well over 200 centuries in professional competition. But the 147 has eluded wow. him. He's ice breaking. Tournament play on the professional circuit, 145. Eighty. There are two players in this group who've done really well in the modern game. One of them's at the table at the moment, the other one is Mark Williams. And the reason I use the word modern is because in many respects, they're old-fashioned players, old-school, float the cue ball around in a very pleasing way. T4. But there, the cue ball floated a little too far. Perry. And the consequence, perhaps an escape route for Dave Gilbert, 54 behind, but six reds on the table, therefore 75 still there.
where the Reds are positioned in the bottom half of the table. There's no way he's going to make 75. Not going to take blacks off all of these. But he could still Eight. pull this one out of the fire. And he's got the mathematical attitude to be able to do so with a, a selection of lower value colours. The red are a couple of inches from the right-hand side cushion. The pink, which is on the right-hand side cushion, both coming to the assistance of Perry right now. Right. The other balls, though, favouring Gilbert. get into the, the cue ball enough to remove the red. He was just a little too straight on the green. It's the eight. But very much back in the frame now. There you go. 28. Well, they call it the dreaded double kiss, don't they? From Perry's point of view, that could have been worse. Could have left an easier opening pot than this. But if the red goes in, 2-1 very much beckons for Gilbert. So, the colours left. Gilbert, 23 behind. That means he needs the lot, and that means he needs the awkward pink. Three. Five. 
five. Eight. Twelve. Good angle. Needs to get nicely on the penultimate ball here. Seventy. That qualifies as nicely, but this kind of shot, so easy to miss. Well done, Dave Gilbert. Thank Tall you. lad. Lengthy reach. That helped. And now just the black. Very nicely done by Dave Gilbert, who takes the lead with a steal. He was 54-0 down in the third frame, but in a couple of visits, he came back to snatch it. Dave Gilbert, two. Joe Perry, one. So, Gilbert has just popped out. As we've said, there's no action on table one at the moment because it's the end of the morning session. The afternoon session begins at 3 o'clock, which is around... 30 minutes time away so what I can tell you is that we've got plenty of snooker coming up today and I'll give you the rundown on it over on table one in the second session this afternoon it's going to be first Ricky Walden against Mark Williams and then Williams remains there to take on Martin Gould here on table two Joe Perry will take on Ben Wollaston first and then Dave Gilbert will return to meet Judd Trump tonight at 7 o'clock. Again, two matches on both tables. Walden Wollaston, Gilbert Wollaston on table one. On table two, it's Perry Trump and then Trump against Williams. This group concludes, of course, tomorrow night. And then we have group six for you on Thursday and Friday of this week. Then it's a a month or two break really for the tournament because we don't come back again for group seven or indeed the winners group until late March the late March that's after the the conclusion of the players championship up in Landudno the previous week it's a very busy time for snooker at the moment as I said We've got the China Open qualifiers coming up at the end of the week, the start of next week, over four days in Barnsley. As yet, I haven't seen the draw, but when I do, I'll let you know who's playing who. I'm sure the lads down here will be interested to discover who they're taking on to earn a trip to Beijing in April. Of course, the prestige and the importance of that tournament greatly increased by the press release over the weekend you might not have seen it, actually, that the China Open this year will boast a first prize of £225,000, with the runner-up to receive 90000 Well, Gilbert's on the money there. Cracking pot. But not the blue to follow. There you go. One.
six. Again, as it was in the previous frame, looking promising for Perry. Twenty-one. Black would easily go, but he caught the red on the way through. Now, that means that Perry undercut it, which might suggest the possibility of a kick there. It was a, a rather strange shot. Lots of running side on the cue ball. A well-judged angle, but not quite a full Six. enough contact. Pretty good effort. And he does at least have a red to the green pocket. Six. Just missing too many, Perry. Simple as that. Mind you, nothing simple left. Nothing at all. Fuck. Nice. 
Well, then, off there. Not a bad thing, at least it's made sure that the cue ball has stayed down the end of the table where Perry would have wanted it. That said, with ball in hand, Gilbert might be one good pot away from opening the door. Well, the black is preventing Perry from potting what would have been a choice of two easy reds. Not as planned. What? In fact, Gilbert's attempted safety completely backfired. This could be the first match in the group that goes the distance. 60. Strange reaction there off the pink. The cue ball seemed to scared more than anything and this is missable. A little too close to the cushion for comfort with the white. Yeah, not surprised. And so what a reprieve for Dave Gilbert. Remember, he cleared up with 78 in the second frame. Overturned a 54-0 deficit in the third to win it on the black. Is this frame going to follow a, a similar pattern where he displays the better end game?
just one clear-cut problem ball. Eight. The red that he's actually mindful of now, bridging over. Nine. I suppose the green being off its spot doesn't make life any easier, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. If indeed he gets that far. Now, does Gilbert have the necessary angle to try and chip the red off the, the side cushion? That's the intention. Not bad at all. So one pressure shot coming up. If this one floats in, Perry's goose could be cooked. The hesitation tells us the importance of the shot is not lost on Dave Gilbert. Sweet. So Gilbert hits the front in the frame. <laughs> nice angle on the blue. No alarms. And now from here, yellow to blue would be enough for Gilbert to prevail. 3. He didn't play it like that. It's worked out not quite a treat. But he'll settle for it all day and every day. And if this goes in, you have to think that Perry's fate might well be sealed. Little far jawish that one, but it's in. And with the rest, Six. all kinds of rests, in fact, Dave Gilbert has been pretty reliable in this match. You know, you can make a case out to say that Perry has had chances to win all four frames. In fact, he's only going to win one of them. Gilbert doesn't pot the pink, but it doesn't matter. His 
end game has been far superior. He has stolen three frames in succession, two from very sizable deficits. And so Dave Gilbert makes the desired start for him to group number five. He beats Joe Perry by three frames to one, and all four matches in this group so far have resulted in 3-1 scorelines. The action here will resume for the second session in around 15 minutes' time. I can tell you on table one it will be Ricky Walden against Mark Williams with Michael